The sample's received in the laboratory and given a unique identifying number so it's not confused. Anything received in the laboratory is opened in a fume hood, which is fitted with a high efficiency particulate air filter or HEPA filter, so that the analysts are covered from a health and safety perspective. That's very important. The next stage of the receipt of the bulk samples, asbestos material to be tested for identification, they're then examined under low power or a stereo microscope in a petri dish under the fume hood again. And that's probably the most important part of the analysis. We use the microscopes because the asbestos fibres are, are extremely small, so you can't really see them with the naked eye, just like having a big magnifying glass. It shines light down onto the sample, and it's about a 10 times magnification. We can then examine the material more closely and have a look to see if there are fibres there, and if there's fibres there, with experience we can almost certainly say that it's asbestos or it isn't asbestos and what type of asbestos. And there's three types of asbestos. There's chrysotile, which is white asbestos, amosite, which is brown asbestos, and chrysidolite, which is blue asbestos. The most valuable part in the identification is a, an experience by cross retrist that's going through the sample and having a look at it under the stereo microscope and that you're looking at the whole sample. Samples can have layers. So with our vinyl tiles, we might have a vinyl layer, then there might be a paper layer, or with some materials, there might be a bitumous layer. And so you need to look through the whole sample and maybe take subsamples to identify each layer. Once we've looked at the fibre and we've got an idea of what it is, then we'll put it into a refractive index oil. We then take the fibre with the forceps and put the fibre onto the slide. And then we take it over to the polarised light microscope and we go through a series of tests there. It's an optical staining, manipulating it with polarised light. The idea of the polariser is to, it sets the light up in one direction, then it diffracts the light out and you get a series of colours, that dispersion staining. Going through a, a series of different steps, you can eliminate different types of fibre because they've all got slightly different coloured hues. You've then got a, an answer which you can put it straight into the database. It's formatted into a formal report. That's the quickest and probably the most economical way of a, examining a sample. We can have a asbestos probably identified in about five or ten minutes. With asbestos air monitoring, when the filters come in, it's very much the same process. The cows come in, they're documented into our system, given their unique identification number, the client details are logged, the location of the samples, the time on and off, the flow rate, and the total time used so we can work out the concentration of fibres per mil. Those cows are wiped down because in our laboratory we have to keep very strict hygiene processes so we haven't got asbestos fibres floating around. We then label up the glass microscope slides with that identification number and we then take the filter out of the cow. That filter is then cut in half. Half the filter is placed back into its respective cow and the other filter is mounted onto the glass slide and it's vaporised and it dissolves the cellulose nitrate filter, which is opaque, into a clear membrane because otherwise we wouldn't be able to analyse it under the microscope because we need light to go through so that we can look at the fibres on that filter. We then put triacetin onto a cover slip and mount it so that we've got the slide ready for viewing and preparation under the phase contrast microscope at 400 times magnification. We count 100 fields of view. So we, we move the stage of the microscope across and we look at each field of view and count the number of respirable fibres in there. And that'll give us a concentration and then we can, a number of fibres, and we can work that out into a concentration of fibres per millilitre of air. A fibre to be respirable that's small enough to get into our human lungs is less than three microns in its width and greater than five microns in its length. Once that's done, we then enter those results into our laboratory database and generate a report for our client. Mm -hmm.